Welcome to part 3 of this video series looking at more advanced registration concepts in Leica Cyclone. You can download the Cyclone database used in this video series by clicking on the link in the video description. In this video we're going to be looking at automatically registering scans on import to Cyclone using cloud registration. I've made an empty database that's called Road Demo and I'm going to import some data from a Leica P40. I'll put a link in the video description so that you can download this project. In subsequent videos we'll demonstrate how to clean and layer point clouds using this dataset. So for this project we're going to be importing a partial project and the data is coming from a Leica P40. Uh, it was set to scan on medium resolution which is very dense. We're only going to be importing a quarter of the data today and we're going to be auto aligning the scans using Smart Align and we're also going to generate scan thumbnails. So I click OK to that. Just get a warning saying that we're subsampling and we're just going to import scan mods 1, 2, 3 and 8. So this is the Smart Align dialog. You can choose to add smart links by time if you've scanned sequentially, say down a road. I'm going to delete those links can also choose to add by distance. So this one is these these scan worlds you can move about. So if you knew that you did scan world one and two you did over here, then you came back and did three near one and then scan world eight was done sort of there. Then adding by distance, you can see it's gonna join one and three rather than one and two because they're close together. I'm gonna delete those links. Today we're going to be using a base map image. So here's a scanned map. It's actually an extract from Google Earth with the scan positions annotated on. So what we're going to do is we're just going to drag these scan positions into place. That's three, and scan mode two, and scan mode eight goes there. And to generate the links, we're just going to move hover over the scan mod we'd like to join to, like so. And just pull out the links. So I'll join to there. We'll also join to this one. This one will join to this one. So there's our network of cloud alignment links. And we're going to click align. And I'll just make this window a little bit smaller so that you can see there's a progress dialog there as well. Cyclone will take a few minutes to import the data so we'll just speed up the footage. So we can see here that Cyclone successfully made one group and in that group of scan mod 1, 2, 3 and 4 it presents you with a little preview of the scans. So we can close that dialog and we're now into the registration window. We'll just flick back to the navigator. You can see that our road scans project is imported. There are our four scans and Cyclone's made a registration. So if we look in group 1 we can see all four scans are there. 1, 2, 3 and 8. And if we look on our constraint list, we can see that Cyclone's created three cloud links between scan worlds two and three, one and two, and one and eight. We can auto add uh, more cloud links once we've got a registration. Um, but yeah, Cyclone wasn't able to uh, create all five links that we added on the map earlier. So check in edit preferences that your subsampling percentage is high I'm using hundred percent and then we can register the data okay so the data is registered and the statistic to look for here is the error vector so the error vector is the absolute measure of the error after the cloud-to-cloud -cloud computation is performed the algorithm calculates the error between the two corresponding point clouds and then root mean squares them to get the RMS. 
The alignment error is based on the overlap quality of all the points used in the solution. So a cloud constraint in a busy environment with lots of vehicles passing or in an office with lots of people moving about will give a higher alignment error than one in which there's no people moving about or there's no cars passing by. That's because a larger percentage of the points, in fact point normals, are different. This doesn't mean that the data isn't correctly aligned, it just means that there are a lot of residuals. What we're going to do now is add in any other possible uh, cloud alignments. So we can go to Cloud Constraint, Auto Add Cloud Constraint, and you can see straight away that it's looking for a cloud constraint between ScanWorld 1 and ScanWorld 3. And now it's going to look at 2 to 8. So it'll look at all the possible permutations and perform a cloud alignment. Okay, so we have a summary here of our results. Our RMS values are in the centimetre range, with the average being about 5 mil. So close that dialog and really re register our data. What we're going to do now is view the interim results. You can see that it looks like our data is correctly aligned, so there's no obviously misaligned scans. And Obviously we could do the quick slice and check the data. So when you're scanning down a linear road like this, it can be difficult to get targets in nice equilateral triangles, but you can see that there are some targets used to register these scan worlds. So we can go back to our registration and we can also add those targets. And that'll just help to tighten up the registration. So the surveyor here decided to use just a couple of targets to register these scans and that he would augment his registration with some cloud alignment. So we can now check the results, compute the interim results. And we can pick a point and say tools quick slice. And we can colorize the scans uniquely. So we can look for any misalignments. Uh, P40 data is very, very clean. Uh, there's very little noise in it, especially when compared to something like the C10 scanner. And uh, so any misalignment really shows up clearly. Often circular features like drain pipes are quite nice to see if there's any misalignment error. So I'm going to turn off the quick slice, colorize the data by intensity again, and you can see that there were a lot of passing vehicles during the scanning process. And in the next video, we're going to look at how to clean data and also how to layer data. So, see you in the next one. If you found this video useful, please don't forget to hit like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching.